moral and physical courage. I do not know which is more important. Moral courage or physical courage. Were I talking to a lot of soldiers, I would lay emphasis on physical courage. But since I'm only talking to a handful of soldiers and mostly civilians, I will lay emphasis on moral courage. What is moral courage? Moral courage is the ability to distinguish right from wrong. And having distinguished that, you must have the courage to stand up and say your piece, irrespective of what your superior thinks, irrespective of your colleagues, irrespective of your subordinates. You must have the courage to say so. A yes man is a horrible man. He must be shunned. He is a disgrace. He may rise very high. He may become a minister. He may become a field marshal. But he will never, never become a leader. He will be used by his superiors. He will be disliked by his colleagues and his subordinates have no respect for them. Moral courage is essential. Now since you wanted to know some examples of moral courage from my past, I will give you a little story. In 1970, when General Yahya Khan put all the pressure on East Pakistan as it was then, and refugees started coming to India, there was a cabinet meeting. I remember the date very well, 28th of April. I was summoned. I had a very strong Prime Minister and Mrs. Gandhi who ranted and raved at me. So what are you doing about it? I've got so many refugees. The Chief Minister of Bengal has just sent me a telegram. The Chief Minister of Tripura has done this. The Chief Minister of Assam is writing that there are more Bengalis there than their own population. What are you doing about it? And I said nothing. But nothing to do with me. She said, I want you to go in and take action. And I said, do you know what that means, Prime Minister? No. I said, it means war. And she said, I don't mind if there's war. I said, may I please quote from the Bible, the first book, the first chapter, the first verse. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you say, let there be war. war. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. It is not the right time to go in. The monsoon will break very shortly. And the whole of East Pakistan will be a swamp. I will not be able to operate. The Air Force will not be able to operate. April is a month when we gather clean the, har the harvest and the agriculture minister was Mr. Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed and I said I will require every railway wagon, I will require every train, I will require all the road space to move my troops and you will not be able to move your harvest and then if there is a famine don't blame me and I said the passes in the Himalayas start opening now, the snow melts. And then if the Chinese give us an ultimatum, I will have to fight on two fronts. And then the external affairs minister, the Khalsa, Sardar Swaran Singh said, do you think China will give ultimatum? <laughs> and I said, you are the foreign minister, you tell me. And then my own minister, 
Jagjeevan Ram, who couldn't call me Sam, he used to call me Sham. He said, Sham, man, jao na. I said, you come man ne ki baat hai. I'm telling you what the facts are. And I said, if you want me to do this, Prime Minister, I guarantee you 100% defeat. Now, Prime Minister, give me your orders. And there was dead silence. And she turned around and said, the cabinet will meet at 4 o'clock. This happened at 10.30 in the morning. So, as the cabinet ministers walked out, I being the junior most man there, was the last to go. She said, Chief, will you stay behind? So I shut the door and I said, Prime Minister, before you speak, do you wish me to send in my resignation on grounds of health, mental or physical? I said, oh, sit down. Everything you told me correct? I said, it's my job to fight. It's my job to tell you. If your father in 1962 had me as his commander in chief, the country would not have been disgraced. The army would not have been beaten. But the army chief did not have moral courage of turning around and telling him he wasn't ready. So she said, all right, you know what I want? I said, yes, I know what you want. And I must be allowed to do it my own way. She said, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a very thin line between becoming a field marshal and being dismissed. I just gave you an illustration of moral courage. Of course, I didn't worry very much because my wife had money. But she would have looked after. She would have looked after. Me. Uh, so much for moral courage. Now I come to physical courage. Fear is a natural phenomenon like hunger and sex. Anyone who says he is not frightened is a liar, except perhaps the Gorkha. Everyone is frightened. It is one thing to be frightened and quite another to show fear. It's when your knees are knocking and your teeth are chattering and you are about to make your own geography. That's when the real leader comes out. If once you show fear in front of men that you may be commanding, it doesn't matter whether they are soldiers, they are clerks, they are labor, they are students. Once you show fear, you should quit. Now again, General D'Souza said, I must give some examples from my own life. This was in Burma in 1942. I was commanding a Sikh company, big tough chaps, very fond of them. I had a man called Son Singh, big man, stood about six foot four. He had been promoted many times. Lance night tonight, and every time because he was a Badmash, he was broken. We'd had lots of casualties and we had to make promotions. So we had a promotion conference with the commanding officer, and So and Singh's name came up, and I said, No, no use making him, he'll be broken tomorrow. So he was passed over. The conference finished, names were published. I came back to my Basha, where my company was in the jungle. And I found my senior Subhita, Balwan Singh, terribly worried. And he said, Saab, Son Singh ko kaid kar diya. I said, kyun kya hua? Usne bola ke aaj aapko Saab goli marega. I said, oh, achcha, peshi ho. So a stool was put in, a table was put there, and Son Singh was marched up in front of me. Son Singh, was at that time a light machine gunner. And light machine gunners carried pistols. And his pistol was taken away from him. So he was marched up in front of me. The usual charge was read out. And I said, 
सोन सिंह क्या बात है साहब गलती हो गया ऐसे तुमने बोला कि तू हमको गोली मारेगा पिकअप द पिस्टल जोरी वॉक टू हिम हैंडल द पिस्टल टू माइस मेरा दिल है मारने का मारो इधर नहीं साहब गलती हो I went off to the mess, had my dinner, came back, and everybody in the company was very worried. And the subida saab Balwan Singh said, "Nay saab, aaj raat aapko aapko bolhi maarega." So I shouted, "Son Singh, kida hai?" I said, "Son Singh, aaj raat mera baasha par tum sentry hoga, aur kal subah paanch baje ek magga cha." एक मग का गर्म पानी जारी बनाने के लिए कोई शक बेशक आई वॉज वोकन अप इन द मॉर्निंग बाई सोन सिंह विद मग ऑफ टी एंड मग ऑफ हॉट वॉटर एंड यू फॉलोड मी लाइक अ लैम थ्रू आउट द कॉन्फ्लिक द लेडीज इन जेंटमैन इफ यू थिंक आई वॉज इन फ्राइट यूर मिस्टेक इन आई वॉज टेरिफाइड बट इफ आई हैव इन डन दैट इफ आई हैव इन डन दैट and put son singh in the clink or something like that everybody would have said dekha hamara saab darta hai just an example of how often during riots and all that some young sergeant nothing but a little stick in his hand walked in and quelled everything by showing courage so physical courage is essential to leadership You needn't be foolhardy like I was. I was very young. I don't know whether I do it today. But physical courage is essential. That takes me to the other attribute, loyalty. Now, does loyalty require very much explanation? We all expect loyalty from our subordinates. Do we give loyalty to them? loyalty is a two way thing we expect loyalty we have to give loyalty do we give loyalty to our colleagues so remember that for leadership you have to expect loyalty you got to give loyalty time is running short there are other attributes remember leadership is nothing else but management of men and resources management of men men have problems men in numbers can be very nasty and a leader must be able to deal with them very firmly when people misbehave like they are misbehaving in bombay these days uh, it's no use saying jai hind to them you got to deal with them very very firmly but you must never forget that men have problems they have human problems they have problems of debt of debt of debt of family problems they get easily despondent and therefore the leader must have a human touch he must have a sense of humor to get them out of their despondency he must have the gift of the gab unfortunately our leaders have the gift of the gab but they have no sense of humor further men and women generally speaking like their leader to be a bit of a man a bit of a lad take example from history julius caesar julius caesar you may agree he was a great leader when he came to rome the senators used to lock up their wives take napoleon he had his josephine and marie antoinette and georgette and paulettes and any number of things and you will agree he was a great leader 
take the Duke of Wellington. The night before the Battle of Waterloo, in his chambers, there were more women of luscious proportions than staff officers. And he was a great leader. Do you know, sir, a thought has just struck me. All these three people that I've talked about had one thing in common. They all had long noses. <laughs> If my time is not up, can I crave your indulgence and talk for another 10 minutes? Ladies and gentlemen, no amount of leadership will put things right. There are two other aspects that we Indians must know and we lack value. One is discipline and the second is character. What is discipline? 